Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news of this evening, Favon Williams is named as a new finance minister, Morris Dixon, to take over education ministry. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has named a member of parliament for St. Andrew East Rural, Favon Williams, to replace Dr. Nigel Clark as Jamaica's Minister of Finance. Williams will be replaced as the Minister of Education by Senator Dr. Dana Morris Dixon, Minister without a portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for information, skills and the digital transformation. In the meantime, recently elected Member of Parliament for St. and Northeastern Matthew Samuda returns to the Cabinet as Minister without a portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and the Job Creation. Williams comes highly qualified for the position. She is a chartered financial analyst by profession, has an MBA with a concentration in finance from Wharton Business School at the University of Pennsylvania and a BA cum laude in economics from Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. JLP backs resigned Marissa Dalrymple Philibert for Trelawney Southern by election. The ruling Jamaica Labour Party has called back Marissa Dalrymple Philibert, who resigned the last year as its standard bureau for a November 22 by election for Trelawney Southern. Nomination day will be November 6. The announcement was made by Prime Minister Andrew Holness at a post cabinet press briefing this morning. Dalrymple Philibert previously served the constituency for four consecutive terms as Member of Parliament but resigned as both a Speaker of the House of Representatives and MP on September 21 last year amid a damning report from the Integrity Commission. Holness, who is also the leader of the JLP, stated that the will of the people influenced the decision to have Dalrymple Philibert as the party's candidate. The Prime Minister also announced the by-elections for the St. Andrew Northwestern constituency, the Marin to be division in St. Thomas and the Inan Town division in Clarendon. Nomination day is November 6, with election day on November 22. The St. Andrew Northwestern seat became vacant following the resignation of Dr. Nigel Clark, who left the office to take up a deputy managing director post at the International Monetary Fund. The JLP has already announced that Dwayne Smith as its candidate. The two municipal seats became vacant as a result of the deaths of People's National Party councillor, former Antibi St. Thomas Rohan Washi Bryan, who passed away in May, and Anon Towns Marjorie McLeod McFarlane in Clarendon in September. MP Robinson saddened by death of Campion student. Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Southeastern, Julian Robinson, has been left saddened by the tragic death of a 13-year-old Campion College schoolboy on Tuesday. Rashad Richards was reportedly on the school's playground when a football goal post fell on him. The second form student was taken to the University Hospital of the West Indies, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Robinson has expressed her condolences to the family and the friends of the teen. As a parent and myself, it is difficult to conceive of the pain being experienced by his loved ones. I also want to offer condolences to the entire Campion College family and to pray for God's guidance and protection during this difficult period. Campion College Chairman Anton Thompson last night said the entire school community was shaken by a short death. Our immediate focus is on supporting our students, staff and, most importantly, Rashan's family during this extremely difficult period. The school has made counseling and pastoral care services available to all members of our community, he said. Mediation effort fails for women involved in roadside altercation. An attempt to resolve a dispute between a woman and her husband's niece through mediation on Tuesday, proved unsuccessful, sending the matter back to court. Julia Edwards and Corian Morgan, who reside in the same community, are currently before the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court over assault charges stemming from an altercation on October 6, 2024. Both parties were reportedly walking along a roadway when they got into a heated argument in which expletives were exchanged. 
Morgan is accused of punching Edwards during the argument, while Edwards is accused of pushing Morgan in her chest. Edwards is charged with assault at a common law, while Morgan is charged with assault or Kajan in actual bodily harm. When the matter was called up in court on Tuesday, Chief Parish Court Judge Chester Crooks referred both parties for mediation, but the intervention effort failed to lead to a resolution. They will return to court on December 16. Their bills were extended. Both parties were warned not to interfere with each other. NCB customers cry out over Uber back charges. Several customers of the National Commercial Bank, Jamaica Limited, has expressed a deep concern after being hit with the charges for Uber Reds all at once. Disgruntled customers have taken to social media platforms, particularly X, formerly Twitter, to detail shocking experiences of being blindsided by deductions for trips that they took a month ago, which have now collectively been withdrawn in one go. This backcharging process has left some individuals facing financial distress, with some users reporting a $1 million lien on their account. The issue on the surface affected only NCB cards. Many affected customers took to the platform to share how the sudden withdrawals have disrupted their lives. One user at the Jamaican BL tweeted, NCB just wiped out my account with a month's worth of Uber charges. How am I supposed to pay rent now? At Moki wrote, when Uber take out my rent money from my NCB account and rent due the next day. Others questioned Uber's involvement in the situation, wondering why the charges piled up in the first place. I do not understand how can it be okay to freeze a bunch of persons' account because your own system glitch, said Andre Millwood on X. The uproar escalated to a live X space held at midnight where over 500 members actively discussed their frustrations. Some shared the stories of financial hardship while others sought advice on how to address the situation with the bank. Despite the late hour, the space was buzzing with activity as users expressed their desperation. Them cannot take the money in a one go, after I didn't take all the rides at once, said a space user. Missing JDF witness returned to Ireland, Pika records a show. A witness from the Passport Immigration and the Citizenship Agency disclosed on Tuesday that an ex-soldier who is being sought to appear in the Keith Clark murder trial as a witness, left the island in May and returned in July. Deputy Director of Immigration, Marie Lou, testified yesterday that the travel information retrieved from the agency's database showed that Albert Spencer left the island on May 10 and returned on July 10. Lou's revelation comes a day after Superintendent Eglon Samuels testified that Efforts by the police to find the witness have borne no fruit. The trial heard on Monday that information pertaining to the distribution of guns and ammunition at the Jamaica Defensive Force for May 2010 cannot be located. Spencer was the record keeper during that period. Samuels testified that he personally went to a community in St. Thomas to search for Spencer and they did not find him. He said this was after he sought the help of the police communications arm, the Constabular Communication Unit, to broadcast via different media platforms a notice that Spencer was being sought. Additionally, the police witness said, under cross-examination, that it had come to his attention during his inquiries that Spencer had left the island in July. He also acknowledged that he did not try to find Spencer's relatives and only searched for him one day after he was given a location where he might have been. Lou, however, testified that she obtained the travel data along with two other sets of similar information and handed them over to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions following a request for information in October. But under cross-examination from attorney John Mark Reed, she testified that she did not receive any request for a C-5 form which she said would have information about the traveler's address or where the person intends to stay. She explained that the form which is used by PICA and the Jamaica Customs Agency is given to arriving passengers to complete and includes a critical information which is fed into PICA's entrance border management system 
from which she had retrieved the travel information. Under further cross-examination from King's Counsel Peter Champagny, Lou said the travel report would also include a photograph of the individual, but that no request had come from the police for a photograph. Meanwhile, later in the trial, the defense sought to block the prosecution's attempt to enter into evidence a certified photocopy of entries made in the ammunition book at the JDF. Tanish Wisdom, Director of Evaluation of Standards at the Independent Commission of Investigations, who was recalled to the witness stand, said the photocopy entries, along with a cover letter, were received from Captain Chester Crooks. Consequently, she said she was asked to go to the Army and to certify the contents. Hence, Wisdom said she did so on June 30, 2011, by going to the legal office where she was handed the ammunition book and cross-checked the information pertaining to the dates given against the photocopy entries. Wisdom said when she received the ammunition book, it was open on the pages from which the information was photocopied and she observed that the information corresponded and as a result affixed her signature to certify the document. She also testified that the cover letter contained the numbers pertaining to the entries. When asked what they were, the defense objected on the basis that she was giving evidence on the contents of a document which was not yet in evidence but was overruled. The prosecution later asked for the document to be tendered into evidence but the defense objected. The jury was then asked to leave the courtroom for the parties to make legal submissions and later dismissed while the submissions were being heard. Lance Corporals Greg Tinglin and Odell Buckley and the Private Arnold Henry are on trial for Clark's murder. The 64-year-old accountant was shot 25 times inside his master bedroom at his Kirkland Close St. Andrew home on May 27, 2010, during a police military operation to apprehend then-fugitive drug lord Christopher Dudus Coke. Thank you everyone for watching. See you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for another news update.